Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nature Boy of Movie Reviews. Slick Nick, woo! It's gonna be hot. Ladies, this is time to style and profile with the one and only Slick Nick, woo! Today, we're not just walking down that aisle, we're strutting down the red carpet of cinema to talk about a film that's tougher than a $2 steak. It'll make you shout, whoo! So buckle up, are you ready? Because Slick Nick is always ready, whoo! I'm, I'm so sorry for that. This is Sean Durkin's The Iron Claw. A Woo! Warrior, mean, mean strike. Today's Tom Sawyer, mean, mean pride. Look, this is really a story about a famous, or maybe infamous, family. It plays like a pretty down-the-middle sports biopic in many ways. So teasing out themes here isn't always crystal clear. But what is obvious is that director Sean Durkin is given the story of the Von Erichs the drama and heft of something out of Greek myth or King Lear. Almost all of its messaging comes from the father character, Fritz. And his short, cutting words seem to say, hey, how do you beat suffering? Well, you're masculine at all costs. And winning covers over all loss. <laughs> oh, a poet and didn't know it, whoo! But if anything sets the Iron Claw apart, it's how determined Durkin is not to shy away from the darker sides of the Von Erich story. The Iron Claw is a picture that wrestles with bigger issues like mental health, the toxic pressures of fame, and the devastating impact of tragedy. Besides these things, I think this is just one of the more memorable depictions of brothers that you'll ever see on screen. The love and affection between these young men is almost palpable. They have each other's backs no matter what, even in spite of the competition that their father has bred into them. This ranking of the boys and their father's favoritism obviously begins to take its toll on them, but it's their connection in this whole Texas wrestling milieu you that ultimately gives them their strength. Now the very best part of The Iron Claw, like many films of this ilk, is the acting. This has incredible performances from its ensemble, including Jeremy Allen White, Holt McCallany, Harris Dickinson, and Zac Efron. There's also Stanley Simons as the Black Sheep Brother, and Maura Tierney and Lily James as the stalwart females caught up in this fracas are never less than exceptional. But for my money, Zac Efron steals the show. Yes, his muscular transformation is just remarkable. Yet, it's not just that he's jacked, it's the softness around the muscle. The way he's able to completely shed this high school musical high charisma and give us a tortured look at a man who was really stunted by the influence of his father. I'll take that Zac Efron over my knee, high school musical. They don't know Nick Flair. Woo! It's like each new scene gives him another coat of melancholic paint, ever increasing levels of soul sadness. The juxtaposition of this huge beefy dude with mountains of internal sorrow, that's the stuff that really sticks for the viewer. Also, the production and set design are stellar here as well. We are well located in this 80s pastiche and Texas circuit of wrestling. And those fight sequences themselves, pretty exquisitely choreographed to bring the excitement of the ring to life. So when a film hits you emotionally, you don't even think about it. You just roll with it. You're lost in the feels. And from what I've read and seen from many people, the Iron Claw left them in ruins. But when a movie tries to and doesn't land, then you have to start taking pieces apart and trying to figure out why it didn't work. And personally, once I began to do that in my head, I started finding flaws. You know, I think we can loosely describe the Iron Claw as first hour joy and ascent to fame in the ring, and second hour a series of much more tragic events. But for me, this bifurcation just never totally worked. I think the pacing of the first hour is pretty dynamic and riveting, and Durkin struggles to maintain this when the pain starts to roll in. And it's not just the change in mood either, or tone, it's that it's emotionally insufficient. We see the events unfold on screen, but we have trouble getting inside of Efron's pain. It's kind of like bang, 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 one tragedy after another. But if we're honest, this is what hurts so many of these large-scale biopics. We have to run a reel of these major tragic events to keep things moving along. But we don't get the necessary foundation of sitting with these characters so they really impact us. And here, you can actually add the fact that some of the more harrowing moments happen off camera and then arrive to our ears rather than our eyes via some pretty tepid dialogue. 
So because of all of this, only the very last sequence of the film really hit me hard. It slows down with his kin, and we feel it. Speaking of dialogue, the writing is occasionally clumsy as well, in particular with the father character. He's very one-dimensional, though I understand that he's essentially fulfilling the role of the wrestling heel or villain in the family story. Fritz is almost a caricature of the driven at all costs, living vicariously through his offspring, dad. So I think the final question becomes, does all of this work for you? Does the collision of the visceral ring sequences and burly brawn alongside these difficult events leave you with a film full of heart and soul? And I think where you land on this divide will ultimately decide how much you love the Iron Claw. So what do we conclude? The Iron Claw is a beautiful story of brotherhood and the heartbreaking tale of the pressure of masculine performance and the quest for legacy. It's a film that captures the highs and lows of their journey, leaving audiences both cheering and teary-eyed, with roundly stellar performances and a new masterclass in the portrayal of puppy dog beefcake sorrow. Durkin's film stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of the Von Erich family and the sport of wrestling. A Monday warrior, mean, mean stride. Today's Tom Sawyer, mean, mean pride. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives the Iron Claw 3.5 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up. Take that like button, put it in a chokehold, and power drive that subscribe. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends. Like that? Is that good or no? Woo! Woo!